everybody, welcome back to chapter 4, section 1, solving quadratic functions. In this video, I'm going to go over solving quadratic functions by the square root method. Um, and to start things off, I'm just going to do a few examples of simplifying radicals. That means we're taking the square root of numbers that don't necessarily have a perfect uh, square root. And so instead of getting it in the decimal form, you break it down into factors where one of them can be square root and the other one can't. So this is what I'm talking about. If I want you to take the square root of 80, you need to think of what two numbers multiply to get 80 and which one of those two numbers can be square rooted. And so if you struggle with this kind of thing, I suggest typing in x squared into your graphing calculator and pressing control T to pull up the table to see your whole list of perfect squares. So here's a list from 0 to 10 of perfect squares, and of course it just goes on forever, but um, knowing at least the first 10 is very helpful. Um, so when I talk about 80, what number goes into 80? And so, you know, you just start dividing, and when you do that, you see that 16 goes into 80 five times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the square root of 80 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And I know the square root of 16 is 4. And remember, every time you take the square root, you say plus or minus, because anytime you take the square root, 4 times 4 makes 16, and also negative 4 times negative 4 makes 16. So anytime you take the square root, you're going to have a plus or minus with it. So I say plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5. So that's what I mean by one factor is square rootable, and the other one doesn't. Um, is not square rootable, so to speak. It doesn't make a perfect square root. You can type in square root of 5 and get, and get a number, but you'd have to round it. So this is how we simplify the square root of 80. Looking at the square root of negative 200, I see that I'm going to have an imaginary solution because it's negative. And then what number goes into 200? The biggest number we have, you definitely want to think of what's the biggest number that can go into it, um, is 100. 100 times 2 is 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. And it was a negative 200. So one of these has to be negative. I like to make the one negative uh, that is um, square rootable. So when you take the square root of 100, that would be plus or minus 10. And then since it was negative 100, it has an i. So you always put the negative with the one you can take the square root of because that's going to make the i and then square root of 2. And again, for the full imaginary lesson, check out the 4.2 video. It comes after 4.1, obviously, in the textbook, but I choose to teach 4.2 before I do 4.1. Um, so make sure you, you check that out. Um, but this is the final answer. So here I have a fraction, 490, divided by 16. And so you see 490, it can be factored out, uh, I can factor out a 49 from that. So that's 49 times what? 49 times 10. So I have the square root of 49 times the square root of 10 over the square root of 16. So I can take the square root of 49, that's 7. I could take the square root of 16, that's 4, and the square root of 10 stays behind as the square root of 10. And so don't forget your plus or minus symbol, and uh, that's it for the answer. So here I have one more example. I have negative 3 over 100. I know the square root of 100 is 10, um, plus or minus, right? And it was a negative number, so I'm going to have i with it. What do I do with that 3? Well, that doesn't simplify, but you can have that um, stay on top. So negative, this plus or minus the square root of 3 over 10, i, is officially the final answer for that one. So this next batch of examples I'm going to solve using square roots, and I may or may not have um, numbers that need to be simplified. So... Um, let me show you what we do. So when you're solving with any, just about any other method, you need things 
with everything on one side. When you're doing it with the square root method, you want to have your x squared on one side and then your numbers on the other. So what I mean by your numbers are the numbers that are not with the x squared, right? So uh, you can always do the x squared method when there is no bx term, all right? So what I mean is there's ax squared, um, let me write it down, ax squared plus bx plus c. You can do the square root method when there's no bx term. There's ax squared plus c. And so the c being the term with no letters by it. So I can add 31 over. And so um, let me just erase this. And um, I have 4x squared equals, and then what's 49 plus 31? That's going to be 80. All right, let's divide both sides by 4. And I get x squared equals 80 divided by 4 is 20. So I'm going to take the square root of 20. And so I get x equals, and let's talk about what the square root of 20 can break down to. I know 20 is 10 times 2, but neither one of those has a square root, and I know it's 5 times 4. So I'll write 4 times 5 because I know 4 has a square root, so I'll write that one first. Um, and what's the square root of 4? That's plus or minus 2, and the square root of 5 stays behind. So that's what x equals, plus or minus 2, square root 5. And that's, what, that's all there is to it for the square root method, basically. In this example, I have 2 thirds x squared equals 1 third x squared plus 6. So I need my x squareds on one side, the numbers on the other. So I'm going to minus 1 third x squared. And so yes, I am adding, I'm subtracting um, a fraction here, but no need to freak out or anything. They both have 3 in the denominator. So just subtract the numerators. What's 2 minus 1? 1. So this is 2 thirds minus 1 third is 1 third. So I have 1 third x squared equals 6. So how do you clear out a fraction? You clear out a fraction by flipping it and multiplying by the reciprocal. So what's 3 over 1 times 1 third? That just makes 1. And so instead of writing it uh, as 3 over 1, you could just write it as 3 if you wanted to. Because um, it's understood if anything's divided by 1, it's a whole number. Um, but uh, anyway, x squared will equal 6 times 3 over 1 would be 18 over 1, or like I said, you can just write 18, and then I need to square root both sides. So I can't do the square root of 18, so what can I take the square root of? 18 is 9 times 2, and I can do the square root of 9. So I'm going to say, oh, and then once you take the square root, the power of 2 goes away. Yeah, because the square root of x squared just leaves behind x, because the square root and the square cancel each other out. So x equals square root of 9 is plus or minus 3, and then the square root of 2 stays behind. So that's the final answer. So with a problem like this one, uh, you have a um, parentheses, you have two terms being squared inside of it, and then you have a fraction on the outside. So let's get rid of that fraction first. Flip it and multiply it to both sides. So I'm going to do 3 over 2 on this side to cancel out that fraction, and then I'll do 20 times 3 over 2. And so that's going to leave behind x plus 16 squared here. And then 20 times 3 is 60, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. All right. So I need to get rid of this power of 2 next. So I'm going to square root this whole left side, and then I'll square root 30. And so you notice that 30 is 10 times 3, and 6 times 5, and 15 times 2. And, of course, 30 times 1. But um, none of these factors um, are square rootable. All right? So we can just leave it as the square root of 30. 
So when you square root both sides and you have something in parentheses, that just leaves behind what's in the parentheses. So x plus 16 equals, don't forget to write your plus or minus though, plus or minus the square root of 30. So then I minus 16 over, and then I will have my answers for x. So when you have a plus or minus answer, you put the normal number first, and then you put the plus or minus symbol second. So I'm doing negative 16 plus the square root of 30, and negative 16 minus the square root of 30. So that's what it means. You can list it like this, x equals negative 16 plus square root of 30, and x equals negative 16 minus square root of 30. You can say that, but that's more to write. The reason why we write the plus or minus symbol is to kind of just um, save space, save uh, time, save ink, whatever you want to say. So you can just phrase your final answer as this, negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 30, and then hopefully you're able to write it neater than I can. Um, but yeah, that's the final answer for that one. So this one, I have negative 2x squared plus 14 equals 70. So the first step, get all my regular numbers to the other side. So minus 14 over. So I have negative 2x squared equals 70 minus 14 would be 56. And then divide both sides by negative 2. And 56 divided by negative 2 is negative 28. And so we got to think, what are our factors of... 28. 28 is 28 times 1, 14 times 2, and 7 times 4. Which one of those has a, a square root in it? 14 times 2 does not, 7 times 4 does. 4 is square rootable. So I'm going to go back over here, and when I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to say x equals, and I have the square root of, and I'll put the one that's square rootable, um, the negative with that one. So negative 4 times the square root of 7 and so x will equal the square root of negative 4 would be plus or minus 2i times the square root of 7. And that would be the final answer to this one right here. So this likes example here, I have a negative fraction on the outside. So I'm going to flip that and multiply by a negative 4 thirds, and that will cancel out with the little dot for multiplication. That'll cancel out the fraction on that side. And then I'll go over to this 12, here, I'll do that, times negative 4 over 3. Uh, I'll multiply that on the other side. So that'll leave me with x plus 1 squared equals 12 times negative 4 would be negative 48, divided by 3 would be negative 16. And so I'm going to square root both sides. And so that will leave behind just the x plus 1 on this side. And the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. And since it was a negative 16, you say plus or minus 4i. And then I just have to minus 1 over. And so the minus 1 wouldn't directly combine with the 4i because it doesn't have an i with it. So you say x equals, and then you just say negative 1 plus or minus 4i. So if you ever have a plus or minus term, um, put that on the second part of your answer. And then you can give me two answers if it can combine. So like this one right here, negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 30, if I asked you to round, you would do type in those two um, answers into the calculator and give me the rounded answers. Sometimes you don't have to round at all. Like um, if this were not imaginary, you could do negative 1 plus 4 and negative 1 minus 4. But since it's imaginary, negative 1 plus 4i and negative 1 minus 4i is as simplified as you can get it. So you might as well just leave it in the plus or minus form. Okay? Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for these notes. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Goodbye.